Presented by Caltech. Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the Carver Mead New Adventures Fund and of course the man behind the vision, Carver Mead. One of the important facts to know about Carver beyond Moore's Law and VLSI, but closely connected to reinvention and inspiration and possibility is that Carver is a fifth generation Californian. In that spirit, I wanna offer some words from the novelist and historian Wallace Stegner, known as the Dean of Western Writers. Stegner writes in his book, Angle of Repose, his clock was set on pioneer time. He met trains that had not yet arrived. He waited on platforms that hadn't yet been built, beside tracks that might never be laid. This, to me, is as good a description of Carver Mead, of the New Adventures Fund, of Caltech, as they come. In today's talks, posters, and discussions, these trains will be met through our imaginations and together we will lay the future's tracks. Thank you, Carver, for your pioneering example and your generosity. Carver Mead is emblematic of the Caltech scholar. The ability to reinvent himself, it's the sort of secret sauce at Caltech. I have felt the effects of the adventurous spirit that Carver Mead has displayed his entire career. He is a visionary. He doesn't follow trends. He embodies everything that's interdisciplinary about Caltech. The Cover Mead Fund is really about supporting faculty to, in a risk-free way, really explore something new. High-risk, high-return projects that can change the world. Yi Sang Yu is collaborating with Francis Arnold to use novel machine learning algorithms for directed evolution. Directed evolution is a method that Frances Arnold and her group have been pioneering for a long time. It utilizes the mechanisms of mutation and selection in order to direct the evolution of proteins towards some desired function. How do you take sunlight and carbon dioxide and turn that into fuel? How do you make non-toxic pest control agents? Essentially, we breed molecules in the laboratory like you breed cats and dogs. My group developed methods for speeding up evolution. It's not hundreds of millions of years, it's days. One of the challenges of directed evolution is that the mutations are, to a large extent, random. What I do is I use machine learning and artificial intelligence to speed up directed evolution, to make it even more efficient and cost-effective. One great example of the seed funding really leading to success was a collaboration between Andrew Stewart and Tapia Schneider around climate modeling. Computer models that we use to describe the world around us are imperfect. Understanding the planet involves a combination of physics, chemistry, biology. All of these processes interact in very complicated ways. The different models that currently exist uh, are all very strong, but they're all imperfect. Unless scientists make bold moves, real advances don't happen. How should we design a model right from the bottom up? One of the projects that's been supported by the fund is collaborative work that I have ongoing with Laura Duvall and Federico Echenique. Laura is really an expert on matching markets and school choice. One thing that economists do that I don't know if many people know about is that we're actually engineers of markets. With this funding, we were able to have uh, students working with us that are helping parse through the wealth of the data that's generated by the deployment of the algorithm in the open enrollment system. There's very few funding opportunities for research ideas that are like in baby steps, but actually that's when the funding really matters. Sometimes it just takes too long to convince government agencies or industry leaders. I believe our faculty are visionary and can see that something is important before anybody else. Mental health has become a major social problem. Major depressive disorder is affecting hundreds of millions of population around the world. 
Wearable biosensors play an important role in personalized medicine because they can continuously collect data from our body and tell us what's going on and what's going wrong with our health. We received the Carbon Media New Adventure Fund to develop a platform that can analyze multiple depression biomarkers for continuous and dynamic mental health assessment. The initial support from this fund could be very important for me to demonstrate the proof of concept. This fund provides the tools for researchers to come at problems from many directions, to be able to take the ideas that come out and translate them into technologies that help improve people's lives. These are the best experts in the world who come together to change direction and find new areas of research. We enable breakthroughs by supporting people to work on hard problems. It was a great honor to be a recipient and working together with other innovators at Caltech on big ideas and wild ideas which have the potential to change the world. Carver Mead has been an inspiration for my research. I hope that I can, you know, in some small way, follow in his footsteps. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Azita Imami and I'm the Executive Officer for the Department of Electrical Engineering here at Caltech. It is an honor to welcome you to this special symposium in celebration of the Carver Mead New Adventures Fund. This fund has been created to champion exceptional projects that are at an early stage of development, too early to attract industry or government support. It was established by former students of Carver and embodies his approaches and practices. Because of these funds, we have been able to grant awards to 16 excellent projects, and we are so excited to share a few of them with you today. I would like to begin by taking some time to reflect, to reflect on the generosity of those of you here today who have championed Carver and Caltech through this initiative. We would not be gathering on this afternoon if not for the generous support of those donors who established the Carver Meet New Adventures Fund. As we continue to push toward our goal of increasing the fund to $5 million to support even more projects and cement Carver's pioneering spirit for generations to come, we thank you for helping, for helping us achieve this milestone. I would like to also invite you today to fully engage with the research made possible by the New Adventures Fund. As most of you know, at Caltech, we bring together fields that are seemingly very different to solve problems that can change the world. People here forge those connections nearly every day. The funds allows our researchers to work fluidly, to propose new ideas, to use novel algorithms, theories, and devices to solve important problems even in other fields. A natural consequence of this unique environment of excellence and discovery is the creation of an ecosystem that serves as a community of academics, innovators, and disruptors. So today is all about curiosity, Caltech, and Carver. Now I would like to introduce Professor Adam Weirman. He is the Executive Officer for the Department of Computing and Mathematical Sciences. He is also the Director of the Information Science and Technology Center. Adam. So I'd like to add my thanks, of course, to all of the donors and everybody here who has supported this fund. I think, you know, Carver 
often I've seen in, in the interviews refers to himself as an intellectual misfit uh, of sorts. And I think Caltech is full of misfits, students and faculty across the board. And uh, we you know, reinvent ourselves, we combine fields, uh, we study problems that outside people think are crazy or long shots or high risk or whatever word you want to choose to, to pick that. Uh, and that's kind of the spirit of Caltech. And this fund is really about embedding that spirit into Caltech permanently and making sure that future generations of students and faculty can have those opportunities. Uh, and, and that sort of seed fund environment is, is just crucially important nowadays uh, with research funding becoming increasingly risk averse in foundations and, and government agencies. And so you have to demonstrate risk, you have to demonstrate short term impact, and that's exactly the opposite of what you need to do if you're going to pursue these big high risk opportunities. And seed funds like this give Caltech uh, an immense competitive advantage in recruiting talents and in enabling that talent to do things that they couldn't do in other environments. Uh, and so I think that's just a really wonderful part about this fund. And my role here at the podium right now is actually to sort of highlight uh, the, the three trustees and alums and students of Carver's whose brainchild uh, this fund was and who worked closely with Mathieu Desbrun, who's here in the audience, uh, to sort of make this possible uh, at Caltech. And so uh, I'd like to you know, take a moment to invite uh, Phil Neshes, Charlie Trimble, and, and Ted Jenkins uh, to stand and, and be recognized for, for their role in, in this initiative. So, and you know, for, for those who don't already know them, Phil uh, I, I, I is you know a trustee, but also I think you know can, you can think of him as starting the first real big data uh, company. At least that's the way I refer to, to the company he founded. Charlie was instrumental in, in the evolution of GPS and, and making that what we know of today, a, a commodity software. And and Ted uh, was role with IBM and, and vice president there has really shaped the the landscape. Intel. Oh, sorry, Intel. <laughs> oh my goodness, Intel. <laughs> <laughs> Intel. I should have looked at my notes for that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, sh it shaped the industry as we know. So uh, with that, I will uh, invite, I think, uh, Phil to start off. And I'd like each of them to say a few words about why Carver, why Caltech, and, and why this fund. So, Phil. Thank you, Adam. In Japan, the Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology can designate an individual as a, quote, certified preserver of important intangible cultural properties, unquote. Popularly known as Ningen Kokohu, or living national treasures. These people are not only the best of the best at what they do, but are daily examples worthy of emulation. At Caltech, we have our own living treasure, Carver Mead. It would take the rest of this whole session to recite Carver's many contributions to science, technology, engineering, and commerce, from VLSI to neural systems to some of his latest work redefining the underpinnings of physics. Instead, I'll mention just a few ways that Carver embodies Caltech's intangible but all-important values that define our culture. Carver is curious. He lives at the boundary between the known and the knowable, ever pushing himself and the rest of us into new territory. Carver is original. Every field he touches benefits from new ways of looking at old problems and startling ways of cracking new problems. Carver is collaborative. His coworkers come from the ranks of professors, business people, students, staff, Anyone who can make a contribution is welcome to spend a revolution or two in Carver's orbit. Carver is humble, despite a list of honors and accomplishments that would take the ordinary genius five lifetimes to accumulate. Carver remains gracious, self-effacing, and just plain nice. Carver is ambitious. At Caltech, you don't just attack the problem, you go for the juggler like Carver. As Caltech people, we all have a little of Carver in us, and we wish we had more. 
So to make sure that Carver's vision and values remain a permanent part of Caltech's culture, we created the Carver Crazy Ideas Fund. It has a more formal name, but you get the general idea. Thank you, and let me add my welcome here as well, and uh, thank you for, for coming. The, um, <clears throat> the thing that uh, inspires me about the, new, about the Carver Mead New Adventure Fund is the fact that it is so synergistic and embodies the way Carver managed his academic career here. Um, as one of his students, as I exited here, I, I got to see this uh, more later on than while I was here, but um, about every... I used to say every five or seven years, but he corrected me at 13 last night. He would change and go on to something else, something that, uh, again, was aggressive, uh, uh, adventuresome, and, uh, and do that. And um, turned out to be a pretty effective uh, way of uh, managing your career. Uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the Adventure Fund uh, just essentially takes that as a legacy and brings it forward to the next generation and takes advantage of the strengths that are fundamentally Caltech. So um, that's what's inspiring about that fund to me, and I um, and so I, I I'm really feel good about uh, about supporting that. The um, the thing I was going to also mention is that uh, he was incredibly helpful to me and uh, my classmates as students. And uh, this is not about me. This is about Carver but I have to do it from my perspective, so I'm going to use some stories that I had. One of the, one of the things that uh, changed my whole life was the fact that uh, when I was finishing up my master's, which was in 1966 in the spring, um, he invited uh, Gordon Moore to come to campus. He, Gordon was the uh, director of R&D at Fairchild. This is before Intel. And um, he, we had a little conference room in Spalding, can you believe the double E's were in Spalding in those days? <laughs> and uh, he, uh, Gordon told us some stories about what was going on, uh, what they'd done at R&D. And then he said, um, by the way, if you're looking for work, we're hiring, and uh, just call this number and schedule a visit. Um, you know, as I said, there were about six of us in there, uh, and uh, I ended up scheduling an event. I don't think I ever prepared a resume, but what happened was, um, uh, three of us got uh, eventually went to work in Gordon's organization just from that class. After that, uh, other people did as well uh, that were also Carver students and came, or came into Intel later on. And uh, as a consequence, it just changed my, changed my whole life. And uh, something I've said um, that uh, I, I really don't think I could have found a better employment agent than Carver Mead. <laughs> so it, uh, it worked out very well, and uh, it went on and on and on for other students. There's a whole, uh, whole group that uh, ended up uh, going through Intel. In fact, um, it's, uh, it's amazing that the, they're so, I think we have like five or six trustees that are, that are still, that had some connection with Intel that are trustees for Caltech. So it's, um, you know, it, we, are a, we are a community. Thank you. For the last two years, <clears throat> the Carver Mead New Adventures Fund has uh, awarded half a dozen or so uh, high-risk seed uh, projects. And the, the reasoning behind this was, uh, was to run a strategic experiment to see, um, uh, uh, see if Caltech had an unmet need for um, uh, $25 to $50,000 high-risk seed grants. Um, we also wanted to find out whether um, uh, the outcomes of these grants were going to be scientifically interesting. I followed a dozen of these things over the last two years and was actually surprised to find that all of last year's awards were scientifically interesting. Now, I would never have run an R&D facility at that sort of success rate, but 
This does indicate an unmet need here at Caltech, as does the fact that uh, there were over 40 proposals for the awards that have been given out over the last two years, uh, many of which uh, were really deserving as well. If you look at last year's awards, two of them went to uh, professors who wanted to try something new. Two of them involved collaborations across divisional boundaries, and two others with perhaps a little more really clever pre-competitive research will end up as startups. The $50,000 was chosen because that's basically the cost of a grad student for a year. Uh, due to the fact that uh, there are shifting grad student schedules, at least two of the projects were mainly done by undergraduates, Carver Hallmark. Uh, this last year, the awards were equally Carver-esque, ranging from photonic computing to uh, um, AI tur turbocharged uh, enhanced evolution to teaching a computer to be funny. Today, I hope we are able to make the case to triple down on the endowment for this Carver New Adventures Fund so as to keep this, uh, this high-risk seed funding mechanism going. I sincerely believe that it is philanthropically efficient. It champions Carver's passion for uh, faculty-inspired curiosity research, and it supports Tom's goal of making Caltech the destination of choice for the world's finest faculty and most promising students. <laughs>